everyone, thanks for joining my workshop. Today we're talking about fractions on a number line. I'm so glad you are here to join me as we talk about how to break down teaching fractions on a number line into simple processes that can help your students grasp this tricky concept. This workshop is approximately 10 minutes long. I hope you'll stick with me all the way to the end for a special free resource. Okay, so let's do some quick housekeeping so I can give you an overview of how this workshop will go. I'm going to quickly introduce myself and then we are going to dive right in and talk about previous knowledge your students need to be successful at this concept. From there, we'll discuss identifying the whole numbers on a number line and determining the denominator for the fractions. We'll discuss labeling the lines and what to do when there is more than one whole number on the number line. Finally, we'll discuss identifying equivalent fractions and then get you your free download. So let's get started. First, I just want to introduce myself for anyone who may not already know me. I'm Cassie Smith, the teacher, author, and curriculum designer behind Thrifty in Third Grade. I founded Thrifty in Third Grade back in 2013, and I've been creating curriculum for elementary school teachers ever since. I have also started to work on creating professional development for teachers, so I'm really excited you are here to join me in my workshop. Be sure you're signed up for my email list so you never miss out on any future workshops. Okay, now we're going to get started. If you want to take any notes, you can download the PDF that just popped up. You don't need it to listen to the workshop, I just created it for anyone who likes to make notes about things as they learn. So let's make sure you're in the right place because no one wants to feel like they're wasting time. So stick with me if any of these sound like you. You're in the right place if you're looking for ways to support your struggling learners with fractions on a number line, you want a simple process for how to introduce this standard to your students, you want ideas for providing interventions for fractions on a number line. If that sounds like you, then let's get to it. Let's talk about what students need to know before they can be taught fractions on a number line. First and foremost, of course, they need to understand the parts of a fraction. Make sure your students have a clear understanding of numerators and denominators. Then make sure they know what whole numbers are versus fractions. Make sure they know how to write a whole number, specifically one whole as a fraction. Practice multiple ways of writing one whole as a whole number, three thirds, four fourths, eight eighths, etc. They also need to know how to determine if two fractions are equal. This is very important, so equivalent fractions should be taught before fractions on a number line. Because of this, students also need a solid understanding of multiplication and fact fluency before they are ready for this standard. When I teach my students the process of understanding fractions on a number line, identifying the whole number is the first step. First, students must identify what whole numbers are on the number line. In the example shown, we see 0 and 1. This is rather simple, but it is an important step, especially when you get to number lines that have more than two whole numbers, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. The next step is to make sure that they are consecutive whole numbers. Okay, so the next step is to determine the denominator for the fractions that will be used to label the number line. I teach my students to do this by drawing squiggles. This is just the way I teach them to count the spaces rather than the lines. So in this example, students would count one, two, three, four, five, six, and say the number line is divided into six spaces. So the denominator that would be used for this number line would be six. So now that we have drawn our squiggles and determined that the number line is divided into six parts, students are ready to label the lines. The first thing they need to do is identify the first whole number on the number line. In this case, it's zero, so students would begin by labeling the fractions with sixth as a denominator. One sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, six sixth. I always have my students do the final fraction to show that it is equivalent to one whole. We can also talk about what this would look like when the first whole number is not zero, but is instead a number like three. Students would learn that they carry the three with them as they label each line. When they get to the whole number four, we talk about how three and six six, or one whole, is equivalent to three plus one or four. 
So what do we do when there's more than one whole number identified on the number line? Here are some example scenarios. In the first problem, there are three whole numbers. You would need to remind your students that we only count the number of sp spaces between consecutive side-by-side -side whole numbers, not the entire number line. So in this case, students would count the number of spaces between two and three to get the denominator. In the second example I've shown, it's important for your students to look at this number line and recognize that the whole numbers that are labeled are not consecutive. Once they realize that, they can put the whole number eight in the middle of the number line and then count the spaces between consecutive whole numbers. Show your students examples like this and talk about what types of mistakes they would make if they went ahead and counted the spaces between the seven and the nine. Identifying the equivalent fractions. This is really important, especially as you prepare your students for end of grade testing. Let's look at our number line from earlier. A standardized test is not going to ask your students to tell what shape is at the 3 6 mark on the number line. A standardized test is going to ask what shape is at the 1 half mark, what shape is at the 1 third, the 2 thirds. So talk to your students about this. What should you do if they ask you to find a fraction that you don't see on the number line? Teach your students to find its equivalent. This is where you can use any of the strategies you have taught your students about equivalent fractions. An easy trick you can teach them is to cross multiply if they want to make sure two fractions are equivalent. Cross multiplying is not the only way I teach my students about equivalent fractions, but it's a trick I teach them once they have a solid understanding. Okay, we're almost at your freebie. But first, if you are looking for more resources for teaching fractions on a number line, you can grab this set of task cards from my TPT store. I also have fraction units for grades three through five in my guided math resources. Head over to my TPT store and click on your grade level to check them out. These units include lesson plans, centers, practice pages, and even assessments, basically everything you need for math. Your free download will also include links to all of these resources. So as a thank you for staying until the end of this workshop, you can grab this free Fractions on a Number Line resource. It includes three Fractions on a Number Line football centers. Just download that file and save a copy to your computer. I hope you enjoyed today's workshop. Just a reminder to sign up for my email list so you don't miss out on any other future workshops. Have a great day.